What's up everybody, my name is Brad and welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to talk about a couple of books I received for Father's Day, a little Father's Day uh, book haul, which was about two weeks ago or so now. And it was funny because my wife and kids, they were kind of talking about, not very secretly by the way, about what they should give me for Father's Day. And so I kind of took the kids aside individually and whispered in their ear, I want books. Uh, so that's what I got for Father's Day. I got some books. My wife took me to Joseph Beth Bookstore in Lexington, and I picked up uh, four books, three of which were brand new to me. I wanted to have read before. I read my father-in-law's copy and wanted a copy of that one for myself. And for um, anyone who's paying attention or keeping track, which probably no one is, uh, but early in the year, I started doing the Read What You Own Challenge, which was like a self-imposed book buying ban. I had to read so many books of my own before buying new books. So this doesn't count. It doesn't break that ban since I did not buy them myself. Someone gifted them to me. Well, my wife gifted them to me. So we're still good on the self-imposed uh, book buying ban. But anyway, let's go ahead and dive into it. We'll talk about uh, these books I got really quick. Uh, so first up, I got Geek Love by Catherine Dunn. Uh, this is a book I've heard the title for a long time. I didn't know what it was about, but the title just by itself did not sound interesting to me. And... It was a year or two ago, whenever the new Nightmare Alley movie came out. I watched that. And I really enjoyed that movie. Uh, so I took to Twitter like one does and posted, I love this movie. What are some books that would kind of capture the same vibe, same feeling and elements as that movie? And a lot of people said Geek Love. So I looked more into it, and it is not at all what I assumed the book was going to be about. Um, it is about a Carney family that travels around the backwaters of the U.S., and it says they have a inspiring a fanatical devotion and murderous revulsion. So it seems like you either love them or there's people protesting with you know pitchforks and stuff um, that do not like them at all. And it seems like it's got the kind of classic uh, tropey you know people in there. There's an aqua boy and a hunchback and some twins. Um, there might probably be a bearded lady that kind of thing in here. Uh, but I love that movie Nightmare Alley, and I really wanted something with that really you know kind of carny carnival aspect to it and I think this is going to uh, scratch that itch. So I'm really excited for this one. Uh, this one is uh, Geek Love by Catherine Dunn. Uh, next up, um, so I picked up No Country for Old Men by Cormac McCarthy and I've read two of his books before. I read Blood Meridian sometime before I started the channel so that was probably six or seven-ish years ago, eight years ago or something like that. And then more recently, last, I think it was December, so about six months ago, I read uh, The Road, which is probably the bleakest novel I've ever read. And I still think about that book pretty consistently, pretty often. I still think about different scenes uh, from The Road. I need to do a video on that one. Uh, but I wanted to read more Cormac McCarthy. I don't think he has a ton of books. I think he's got like 15 to 20-ish somewhere in there. Uh, so I feel like he's an author where I can, uh, it's not a daunting task to read through his whole catalog of books, unlike, say, Stephen King, who's got 80-something books or something like that. So I think that's what I want to try to do, read through Cormac's um, entire catalog of books, and I don't think that'll be too hard of a task to tackle. Uh, but I picked up No Country for Old Men. I have seen the movie. I really love the movie. So I want to see how close the movie stuck to the book or if it you know, veers off in its own direction. Uh, but for those that don't know, it's um, kind of a border war, Texas-Mexico border with the drug runners and stuff. Um, a guy finds a truck, a bunch of dead bodies around it, and a bunch of drugs and money in the truck. He takes it, and then you know the, the bounty hunter or the, the hitman, whatever it is, comes after him trying to get the money back. And I'm really curious. I cannot remember the character's name, but I believe the actor's name was Javier Bardem, who played the 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 hitman or whatever he is in the movie. And he was absolutely, you know, chilling and scary, not like horror movie scary, but just, you know, a person you did not want to be around. So I'm curious to see how that character is portrayed in the book. And if that comes across in the book as well as it did um, in the movie. So I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, I love the movie. Hopefully I love the book as well. Uh, no country for old men by Cormac McCarthy. Uh, so this next one, this one, it was kind of a cover by, I was interested in the cover and then I read the synopsis, and it really sounded like something. Uh, didn't, doesn't sound like anything I really read or tend to lean towards reading, uh, but it sounds really good, almost kind of like um, a self-finding odyssey kind of book. And I hope I don't mess the author's name up, but it's uh, Kaveh Akbar is the author's name, and the book is called Martyr, but it's got an exclamation point, so you've got to yell it. Martyr is the name of the book. But the cover is so simplistic, it's just kind of this... This dingy yellow, and I looked it up. I think this is like an Iranian figure is what it says 
um, on the inside of the book is what this figure is. Uh, but it's a really simple cover and it drew my attention and I'm gonna read part of the synopsis because I don't think I can do the book justice describing it myself. So buckle up, we're gonna read a little bit of the synopsis here. And like I said, it just sounds uh, like something completely that I normally would intend to uh, read, but it sounds very engrossing and engaging and something I'm very interested in. Uh, so the synopsis goes, Cyrus Shams, the novel's hero, is a young man grappling with an inheritance of violence and loss. A mother whose plane was shot down over the skies of the Persian Gulf in a senseless accident and a father whose life in America was circumscribed by killing chickens on a factory farm in the Midwest. Cyrus is a drunk, an addict, and a poet whose obsession with martyrs leads him into the mis mysteries of his past toward an uncle who rode through Iranian battlefields dressed as the angel of death to inspire and comfort the dying toward his mother through a painting discovered in a Brooklyn art gallery that suggests she might not have been who or what she seemed. We'll leave it at that. So that just sounds really interesting. Sort of this uh, kind of odyssey, like I said, discovering oneself and one's past and whatnot. And the author, um, Kava Akbar, he is an award-winning poet. So I'm going to guess that the prose in here is really, really good. Uh, we'll see how the story turns out. But as I matured in my reading, I've really leaned more towards, you know, if the prose is really is really great, I'm probably going to like the book more as opposed to, you know, really plot-heavy, story-driven, that kind of thing. So if the prose is pretty and interesting and in-depth, then I'm probably going to like the book. Uh, so that was another reason why I picked this up, uh, because he is an award-winning poet, and this was his debut novel. Uh, so I picked up Martyr! by Kava Akbar. I don't know. I keep screaming. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's got the exclamation point, though. That's what you're supposed to do. All right. And the final book, this is the book um, I have read before, and the title of it really describes this book perfectly. Uh, this is called Pappy Land, a story of fi uh, family, fine bourbon, and the things that last by Wright Thompson. Uh, so I'm a Kentuckian, so I'm very much interested in not just bourbon, but the history of bourbon as well. And that's kind of what this goes into. Uh, the history of uh, Pappy Van Winkle, a very um, hard to find, very expensive uh, bourbon. And it goes into a bit of the past of that and the family who created Pappy and their sort of legacy. But also it's almost like this kind of autobiographical tale of Wright Thompson himself and kind of the parallels between his life and the life of uh, the Pappy Van Winkle family, how they kind of um, intersect at different points in their life, which I thought was interesting. A lot of the reviews didn't like him inserting himself into the story as much, but I kind of like those parallels he was drawing between his own life and the Pappy Van Winkle uh, family. And the history aspects of this book, I think, were the most interesting to me. Talking about all the old uh, bourbon barons and history of like the different racehorses and the parties they'd go to and all that kind of stuff and how it's a lot of that is kind of lost to time. Uh, but bourbon is a thing, is a legacy that can be handed down generation to generation. Uh, a thing that lasts. So I really enjoyed that one. And again, you know, uh, Buffalo Trace Distillery is really close to me. Um, you know, it's got a map in here, Buffalo Trace is on there, Lawrenceburg Bottling Company, Stitzler Weller, Louisville, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so the history of bourbon is interesting to me. So if you like bourbon and want to learn more about the history of it, um, I would suggest checking this one out. Uh, Pappy Land by Wright Thompson, a story of family, fine bourbon, and the things that last. Uh, but that's it. Those are the a uh, handful of books I got for Father's Day. Um, if you've read any of these books, let me know what you thought about them down in the comments below. Uh, but that's all I have for you guys today. So thank you for spending your time with me. Again, my name is Brad, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye.